so far up. What's up, guys? Welcome to the stream. Hello. This is Dylan. Right there. I am Dylan. I'm Taylor. Hello. And together we are two of the hardware hams. And today we'll be talking about GPUs, explosions, and cases. So just, you know, normal computer stuff. <laughs> yes. Uh, we have many explodey things and many um, cool things to talk about. <laughs> exactly hot and um, cold topics yeah uh not i mean a new word gpu is released uh basically how we're gonna do these videos from now on is uh kind of a monthly recap of everything that happened uh throughout the month we'll try and do it that way so kind of an end of the month uh news video uh, kind of summarizing things that happened august wasn't crazy uh spring and like winter or fall kind of those those times of years are a little bit more heavy in the um, PC enthusiast world, but uh, we have a few things to talk about today. Um, so yeah, uh, Gigabyte, uh, not doing so hot right now, uh, PR wise and with what is, what is happening here. Let me, I am informed that I'm a little quiet. What if I do that? Does that, does that work better? We will find out. Yeah, well, it seems delayed. <laughs> I might have to turn NVIDIA broadcast off. I have had that problem in the past where it just makes it too quiet. Technical difficulties. That should be fine. I can just turn it to the normal microphone, too. Want me to turn him up on Discord? Oh, that works, too. Let me try that. All right, try that, Dylan. Testing. One, two, three. Testing. We'll find out in 10 seconds. Um, <laughs> Up more. How about that? I, I, See how that I goes. Might need, okay, I might need to turn off NVIDIA broadcast, honestly. What's the verdict? Please turn it off. Yeah, yeah, I think probably. that's I think that's the problem. <laughs> um, let's let's do that. I'll just turn it off. Okay, how does that work? Is that a little bit better? A little bit worse? I'm just on the microphone now. Only on the microphone. I'm probably too loud now, actually. What, is it just that is it just that my microphone is too loud or that might yeah <laughs> because like i've turned it up i can turn it up some more here give me one second how's that testing one two three testing okay yeah let's roll with that for a while See how that goes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Gigabyte uh, under uh, heavy fire here. Um, I, I, I don't have a whole lot to say about this because I am no uh, electrical person. But uh, what I do know is that the power supply units that Newegg has been bundling in the Newegg Shuffle uh, are some of them are Gigabyte brand, and I know there's a it's a few serial numbers, not all of the power supplies that gets bundled and that are Gigabyte. It's a select few that have been. Um, and basically, what's happening is those power supplies are failing, and not like failing as in breaks, uh, failing as in could catch things on fire. Yes, and can damage irreplaceable hardware. Um, if something like that takes out your GPU that you just spent eight months trying to get that could be right. pretty depressing <laughs> yes um power supply is very very important to the uh integrity of the system because a bad power so that's why you don't skip on on your power supplies they true. uh are very important um never get the cheapo 35 dollar deal that has no uh, 80 plus certification kind of power supply to power but dylan system. 
What, what about the RGB lights on the fan? You can't put a price on that. You know, $35 is not a lot for an RGB fan. <laughs> so just buy the power supply for the Take fan. Take the fan out. Put it, put it right in your into computer. The power supply. There you go. I, I like it. That. I like it. I like it. <laughs> No, that's, don't that's take crafty. apart your power supplies. That's not what you're supposed to do. If you have problems, send it in. Yeah. No, it's it's kind of crazy. Um, I I got to be honest. I have not been a fan of Gigabyte for a while. Um, so you had like, one experience and you didn't even contact them about it. That's all it takes, Dylan. Oh my god. <laughs> um. No, I mean, yeah, I had the the 1650. Um, and it had like Super weird... or was it was it just a normal 1650? Is it, it was a 1650 Super? Super, okay. Yeah, um, but it had a weird, weird ticking issue. It wasn't the fan like there wasn't any interference in the fan, but under certain loads, it would just make like weird sounds. I don't know if it was like the coils in it or something. Um but it was not not awesome um did you but, ever uh, contact gigabyte about this no i did not oh. what? Uh, but Mark? i also Mark? haven't heard stellar things about their customer fair service yeah um, fair enough and i wasn't going to hold on to the card for that long so i wasn't that concerned about it but it was like hmm that's not awesome um so yeah now a couple unfortunate things happening not only do they have a bad product which like is one side of the scale. But then if you see that there's a bad product and you have a independent review company being like, Hey, we found flaws with your product and telling you this privately, which GN always does with their, their product testing. They go to the company first and they're like, this is our information. We found you guys should do something about this. And, and they, they were never like, listen, they were like, never listen. No. Cause they're like, eh, it's just one person on YouTube, like, whatever. No, it's you're you're testing. We did we don't see that, <laughs> is basically well, what they said. Especially like, when it's like a safety concern. The same thing happened with NZXT, of the whole screw thing. Uh, yeah. With the um, it was the riser cable. Mm -hmm. Um, basically they had it where you actually had to screw in a uh, I believe it was an aluminum screw into a pcb and basically you saw like pcb flakes coming off as you were screwing it in um they've since remedied that but mm -hmm. it took a lot <laughs> of convincing to even get that to happen and it makes sense they're a company like they need like the sad but truth about companies in general especially this is attributed to like certain uh car recalls too is like if the price of what's going to happen exceeds um what it costs to actually go through and replace these um then they're gonna do it yeah so it does make sense from a company perspective it sucks as a consumer but also like things exploding is not good pr <laughs> no no yeah. well and that that back to the nzxt it wasn't just the fact that oh well if you screw this in and out then it's gonna wear through and you're not gonna be able to tighten it down anymore it was that that screw was going through and going into the riser cable which yes. is then causing a short um, yes. And I think Jay's Two Cents also did a video about that and, like, showed it and, like, fixed it or replaced it in uh, a build that he had done for a friend. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's it's stuff like that. Like, it's one thing to make a mistake as a manufacturing process, like, or you an oversight in the development of a component. Um, but it's another thing to see that and decide to not take action when it's given to you so now right. it's handing now... you on a platter and being <laughs> like hey we can give you good pr by being like hey let's do this let's do that yes it costs money but keeping good relations with your customers costs money that's just what it is and you know what happens when you keep customers they buy from you again and again and right. again and again it's it's all about like what what it feels like it's all about the short-term gains like oh mm -hmm. new eggs paying us money or we're paying new egg to do this whatever like getting our power supplies in people's hands and uh along with that um new egg has started to refund those uh power supplies specifically you don't have to return the bundle um necessarily so they've actually started refunding those power supplies it i believe it's a, a return and exchange program 
it's not a return exchange. It's not a straight up refund. Okay. Well, I um, mean, exchange is better than nothing, really. Right. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, question in the chat: So, are they like exploding, exploding, or catching fire? So, um, it's like the... a serious like arc coming out of the fan area, like yeah, sparks. <laughs> so there's like a vented area for the fan, and you see it go, um, you know, like a taser, like like you see that like arcing inside the power supply. Um, right. So it it doesn't catch fire, but it can it cause could. fire very easily. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh it is no good. That mm -hmm. is true. <laughs> um yeah. so do you have like more of an idea of like what the the causation is? Um I, I mean, I'm happening? sure it's very complicated, but the part that I do understand is that it's most most commonly caused when the power supply has tripped its overpower protection or OPP. And so once it once it trips that OPP, even if it's turned back on in the normal wattage range, it still has a chance of failing then and okay. exploding. So it's not just oh well if you push your card to a your your card push your power supply to a hundred and forty percent, then yeah. it's gonna explode. It's not just the over power protection that's not working. It's the actual um, components internally of the power supply that will fail once that has been tripped so it's a case of um cheap hardware and cheap enclosure more power equal fire yeah basically <laughs> okay cool and I just and it's layman's terms there <laughs> yeah it was interesting watching the gamers nexus video about power supplies because i i don't mm. know that much about them they're kind of just a you know the cube that gives you the 12 volt power for your stuff um, but how they actually have that OPP set at a certain amount, like 130 to 140% in a lot of mm -hmm. power supplies. And you think, oh, well, like this one doesn't have its OPP set to like 150%. So that's good. Cause like you, you can spike higher in your usage and you're not going to trip your power supply, but really that's bad because that can cause over wear and tear on the internal components that aren't actually rated to go that high because so it's kind of like it's... overclocking your power supply yes okay. by just drawing more power <laughs> isn't that what overclocking is well yeah okay i guess <laughs> yeah yeah okay so what you want is a power supply that has um a lower threshold where it hits opp right so you right. want something that's like 110, 115, and it hits overpower protection, and so it doesn't wear and tear on those. Yeah, um, I mean, there is okay. there is certain times where, um, you know, s during startup or when you start a large load, then it the, your GPU or your CPU can have a, a spike to a higher uh, percentage than normal. Um, and that's that's fine. That's allowed because it's milliseconds it's not okay it's not three seconds not 10 seconds it's like a spike when it starts up and then it levels out um, i know that's what happens with like the 30 series gpus of like they can spike to like 380 watts and that's not even like the tdp of like the power that right. they draw that's like well above that so that yeah. makes sense so you do want some leeway in it you don't want it to be like 105 percent or right. it trips so yeah but they were testing this power supply and it was between 134 to 140 that it was okay. tripping at consistently um which is a little bit on the high end um mm -hmm. again this is coming from someone who has not done testing and has not watched a lot of testing videos on power supplies um but that's what steve said <laughs> okay <laughs> so <laughs> i'm gonna take his word for it fair enough yeah that totally makes sense um and it does really suck that uh you know manufacturers are doing this but i mean if you did buy a bundle that had a gigabyte gpu in it or gpu why are we keep talking about cards um psu in it uh you can always go to them and well not always it actually just started happening i think it was today i saw it in reddit or something mm -hmm. that you're able to exchange uh that power supply for something 
my i mean it's got to be better right at least a little bit better if not um safer yeah. i would hope uh, <laughs> hopefully so there's that yeah yeah and i think i think this is just another really good um demonstration of how useful gamers nexus is to the oh, yeah. pc enthusiast community in the fact that they will call out these companies um whether they have a long history with them or not whether they're you know they frequently partner with them for sponsors or whatever like they they're sponsored by corsair all the time but they will just as easily rip into corsair if they're doing something shady yeah. So it's yeah. it's that accountability in this PC building space that I think is really cool to see and you know a little refreshing to see content that's not so so focused on okay well what's going to make me money as a content creator sure. but it's okay how can I help to protect those in this community that don't have the knowledge or the testing equipment or whatever mm -hmm. to see where there might be a potential safety hazard or just you know a company doing something shady yeah that yeah i know we're we're really lucky to have them um and a lot of others i just know gamers nexus in particular well like <laughs> i know the videos of like this video is sponsored by us and then they <laughs> point to their store kind of thing because they're like we can't send this video to anyone nobody's going to sponsor this <laughs> so we have to have ourselves sponsor it so that um we can you know say the truth speak the truth kind of thing mm-hmm um yeah and they had really... to buy a lot of equipment for the power supply testing it oh, was like yeah. thousands and thousands of dollars so they did like a 10 percent sale on their gn store with a code send help <laughs> 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 so uh anyone that wants to use that That's feel cool. free to go to the gn store and pick yourself up a mod mat oh i want a mod mat so bad i can't justify right now but i got their uh desk mouse pad and it looks pretty nice i mm -hmm. like the uh wireframe um design of the aio and air coolers and stuff like that it's really cool yeah they've got some uh, really uniquely designed um merch it, it feels wrong to even call it merch because it's just like nice high quality stuff mm -hmm. usually yeah. when you think of merch you think of like a t-shirt or like, like a concert t -shirt, just a yeah just a, what you think like of. branding on some generic product yeah but this is actually like they made something that you can use it's cool so I'm we're way off topic yeah uh, <laughs> i know no well we're still kind of on topic it's still there um i'm trying to see if those power supplies if they're 80 plus certified um i don't think they oh they're 80 plus gold yeah so that's interesting um i might need to know learn a little bit more about what's happening it is just basically at a very layman's term level it is just the opp and having things go overcurrent. and there's like the overcurrent protection isn't low enough so that things start breaking easily right is that typically well i think that's one of the things that they were testing but i okay. don't think that's necessarily the specific cause of the failure because okay. sometimes they would have it uh exploding when it was only under like 60 percent load or something but that, like that. wasn't so, that after they went to 140 though yes okay that's true so that's kind of what i'm trying to figure out like did the parts just break and then they turned it off and then they turned it on to low amount and then it just popped it could be correlation i don't know if it's specifically okay. causation though fair enough it is interesting though because even like the 750 watt one it has a five-year warranty like i understand that these are exploding but like from like a user perspective a consumer per perspective like you see five-year warranty these 10-year warranties you don't expect it to fail or even explode like there's got to be something yeah. that went amiss either on gigabytes i mean it has to be it, gigabyte has to own up to it like it's yeah. their product they're on the they're on the line for this but mm -hmm. something wrong has to have happened well like, and it's crazy they even talked about how many of them were sent doa is it like yeah. ridiculous number just like never like even is, had a chance is it just like some of the psus came from like they were using a factory for a while and then they since stopped but then they still like sold these like it again it is on gigabyte they sold the product product no worky product sometimes explode return product <laughs> get it and they're on yeah. that they're on the line for it that's totally what it is but it's just looking at these stat 80 plus gold pretty much any 80 plus gold that you get 
you expect to not i mean you should expect any power supply to not explode but if it wasn't even 80 plus certified i'd be like okay like this isn't great but like yeah. 80 plus gold certification i know it's for efficiency like it's a complicated uh, mm -hmm. math hierarchy on that but when you look at 80 plus gold um when people see it it's like oh it's a good quality one right yeah whether or not that's what that means it means that in one way um and it's a, again, it's a name brand you right know, you're not yeah. getting something like some like off-brand company you've never heard of that's mm -hmm. super cheap it is gigabyte like they make everything you expect it to be reliable it has the warranty it is mm -hmm. the gold gold standard uh, saying that in ref mm -hmm. reference to the efficiency not like <laughs> this is the best <laughs> right right but, and like um, you you look at um so like gigabyte obviously motherboard manufacturer graphics card manufacturer you might go the way of um you know when you're looking at appliances like buy some from somebody who only does appliances that's true for the most part maybe but with power supplies it's like they they buy them there they don't buy them they um they kind of a lot of these companies use the same factories and they mm -hmm. kind of just rebrand them a lot of the time because you would say oh just get a c sonic they only make power supplies that's true c sonic power supplies are very good however Corsair power supplies are also very good. Um, EVGA power supplies are very good. Mm. There are a lot of these name brands that do graphics cards or motherboards or even cases that um, are very good. Um, so it really, unfortunately, has to come down to power supply by power supply. Like, there's, there's no, like this series is bad or this brand is typically not the greatest it's like or this eight all 80 plus apparently all 80 plus gold power supplies are usually good kind of thing <laughs> like there yeah. you got to go and research the power supply see who has it see the failure rate blah 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 um i know linus has a or not linus himself but the forum has a psu tier list mm-hmm um of different power supplies that you can that you can get um that is pretty cool but yeah it has like recommended for high-end systems tier a like even be quiet is like on the top of tier a be quiet's like just as cases and coolers and they make power supplies and it's good yeah <laughs> who would have thought that right <laughs> yeah um apparently msi does power supplies cooler master oh wow there's a lot lee and lee apparently I didn't know that. Um, NZXT, Fantech. Like, there's a lot. I mean, granted, they're probably not ones that are readily available, but they do exist, and they're yeah. mostly from case manufacturers. And that actually makes a lot of sense with case manufacturers having power supplies is because you can build the power supply into the case if you want to, which is something we might we'll get into here in a little bit um, with that new case mm -hmm. uh, and the way that it works in there. But it is cool to see, like, a lot of power supplies in the past were built built into the computer but it looks super ugly but what if you could buy a power supply that's built into the case and it works really well and it's modular being able to take in and out but because you bought the pair together you get a small discount yeah right because if it's the same manufacturer and they make good power supplies why not right yeah fair point i think i think dell makes some of the best power supplies but it's only ever in pre-builds <laughs> mm. they made like pretty much all mm, i shouldn't say all but most of the power supplies you get in like dell workstations they're like all platinum they're all really? all 80 plus gold or 80 plus platinum yeah <laughs> like pretty much especially servers but like for the most part it's all 80 plus platinum which is funny and, because then there was the the alienware that um was no longer able to be shipped into certain states <laughs> because of the efficiency because they weren't I, I don't know if that was specifically the power supply, but they didn't meet the new efficiency regulations to be sold. Uh, well, sometimes that is due to whatever settings are set on the motherboard when it ships. Uh, because there's like a power saving mode, there's like an energy star mode on power mm -hmm. supplies sometimes that um, have to be enabled. And yeah. so you have to say, hey, this is enabled for sure on here. So when it gets sent to them, like their um <laughs> like their screen goes dark after five minutes like things right. that are set manually kind of thing to be able to allow that um and when we talk about like 80 plus certification so that basically means that this is certified to be at a certain efficiency level is essentially what it is so 
Um, 80, like if you stay knowing the power supply, if you stay within the 80 plus gold, 80 plus platinum kind of margin, you're going to be doing really well in the long term cost wise. So when you look at like your electrical bill, having yeah. a higher efficiency power supply actually helps with your electrical bill. Mm -hmm. um, not by a ton, but it'll save you like, what, 10, 20 bucks a year if you're gaming a lot on it kind of thing. Yeah. Like over time. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's basically the same thing as having a car that gets good gas mileage. You're taking one form of energy and you're converting it into another, whether yep. that's gasoline to motion or that's 120 volts from your wall into 12 volt and 5 volt in your computer. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just an inverter is all it's doing. Okay. So how, how that... efficient it can convert the power from one form to another. And power itself um as far as the power supply goes you always want to be like pretty much in the middle right of like not on the high end of the wattage and not on the low end you typically want to be in the middle for the best efficiency i thought that's what it was i'm not i'm not sure i'm not familiar I, with that i think that's what it is like you're gonna get the most cost savings that way and to be fair i know it's rated like power supplies are rated for 850 750 watts um but you'd never really want to hit that limit yeah um that's not great on the components, um, especially if you're building a small case and you have it at 750 and it doesn't have enough airflow. It's just going to get hotter yep. <laughs> without anything being able to work. So, yeah, it's. Uh... Anyways, Gigabyte under fire, uh, we should probably move on <laughs> to another topic <laughs> here other than power supplies. Let's do it. Uh, Let's talk about GPU stuff, Dylan. Sure. 6600 XT. So, this was announced uh, a little bit earlier this month. This card is priced at, I want to say, 379 379 I know MSRP is, like, uh, hearsay at this point. It's a joke. As, yeah, it is a joke, but you have to go off of it because it's the only, like, logical data point there is. You can look at the used market, but that will fluctuate. And it makes sense. Though, to be fair, this card is not going over $400 on the used market. So there's that to consider. But So it is so the this, budget option. Yes. So this card, performance-wise, is right in line with the NVIDIA 3060. Um, looking at some benchmark videos, it's pretty much one-to-one -one ratio. Now, MSRP, the um, 3060 is looking pretty good right now because if you have the on one hand the 6600 xt at 379 dollars mm -hmm. and then you have the 3060 at 329 dollars you're basically saving 50 bucks you're getting dlss and i know there's going to be like some discrepancies between dlss fidelity fx um ray tracing all that jazz though i don't think on that low end of a card you really care about ray tracing <laughs> at that point you yeah. get a little bit of it if you're using it for work or whatever, but um, for games, it I, I think probably the only game it might work in would probably be Minecraft, honestly, <laughs> just because of the the taxing um, amount of processing power it needs. Mm -hmm. um, but so at MSRP, 3060 definitely makes the most sense. But uh, in the used market, with this thing not going above four hundred dollars, and with the 3060 going up to five hundred dollars on the used market well that's not even the used market though that's the crazy thing is if you look at prices for aib cards which is all the 3060 is there's no founders yeah. edition um mm -hmm. all of them are like 400 to 500 dollars trying to pull like, it up now a 36 actually most 3060s are going for like 700 bucks yeah in the used market yes yeah. So like um Six, examples XTs are going for 640. So it I mean Oh, there's a new listing here. Yeah, and then things bid on get bid on and everything right. like that. So there's that. That's the thing that's tough about uh buying on the used market or saying, "Hey, buy this cuz it's cheaper cuz it's going to be a different price every time." There's a mm -hmm. range that it goes, but like MSRP is kind of the only thing you can really compare against, right? Now. Right. But like so MSRP of the 3060 is 329 um but most most aib cards that are 3060s are more like 500 dollars 
Like you've got one EVGA that's three ninety nine, you've got uh, MSI that's five hundred dollars, um, uh, ASUS Tough Card five ten, um, a Gigabyte four sixty, um, the uh, ASUS five thirty. That's for a thirty sixty. Even That's... 30, 60 TIs are going between like 800 and 850 dollars. That's you know that's 3080 pricing, right? <laughs> For a 3060 <3060 laughs> right. TI. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. So... But but that is so MSRP, um I I don't think 329 is a is a good uh place to say that the 3060 is priced at because maybe there's one or two uh versions of it that are that cheap but most of them aren't and in this market you're not if you have the option to buy one at any msrp it's still a better deal than buying it scalped but you're basically getting like 25 to 30 percent scalped (laughs) by buying it from msi or gigabyte or evga Mm -hmm. because you're still paying 200 dollars over what the msrp of that card is so <laughs> that's like true. It, there's no way you can you can justify the msrp of the evga 3060 to be the same as the founders edition 3060 ti and that well what do you mean the same like i mean they're because... both 400 dollars. well that's true <laughs> So that that's a good point. the same. <laughs> they, yeah, they are the same price wise. That's a good point. And the 3060 Ti's performance is so to give like a spread. So 6600 XT is comparing with the 3060, right? So um, the 6700 XT, not 66, 6700 XT is comparing with the 3060 Ti, but the 3060 Ti's performance can it's like a good 30 percent faster than the 3060. Like, but granted, get what you can buy at a reasonable price. That's that's really right. what to take from this conversation. We can talk about MSRP all day. We can talk about performance all day. All day. If you need a GPU, get what you can buy, and that's right. not a horrible ripoff deal, mm-hmm. unless you really, really need it right now. <laughs> uh, in which case, go for the higher end options because the lower end options at those price points don't make any sense. Yeah. Like thirty sixty Ti is going for seven fifty to eight hundred and fifty dollars. Like what are thirty eighties going for right now? It's probably a lot more, but oh wow, they jumped in price. They are way more expensive than I remember. They're like <laughs> fifteen to eighteen hundred dollars. Uh-huh. They were like twelve hundred dollars a little bit ago. <laughs> <laughs> um and at that point, five hundred dollars over is not double. Not good. Yeah. Uh but right now it's over double. So that's the thing. The used market just fluctuates so often. It's hard to keep track of everything. Mm-hmm. Like some of these, like if you can get the problem is you can get like a 3070 for like $800. You're doing really good. Right. Well, I mean, yeah. that's how much Caitlin's um, MSI 3070 was. It was like mm. 800 bucks. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's a good card, but it works good. And that was that was now to be fair. That was MSRP. So that wasn't right. even buying used. No. That was from a uh, New Age Shuffle winning to get that card, and that was seven fifty ish. It was mm-hmm. seven fifty ish. It wasn't right. eight hundred, but it was like seven hundred fifty dollars plus or minus tax. Higher thing, but... MSRP than a thirty eighty. Yes, um, <laughs> it probably would be around the same price from an AIB though, because thirty eighty Founders is the only one that's priced at seven hundred dollars. Right. Because if you got it kind of... 3060 is the only one that's like on its own island because there's no actual Founders Edition card. But mm-hmm. comparing like MSI... Like what's an MSI um, Ventus 3080 Go 4? Oh, not Go 4. How much does it cost? <laughs> uh, it looks like MSRP for the Ventus 3080 is uh, $1,070. Wow. So like over three hundred dollars over msrp that's expensive yes um so with that in mind 
$250 over MSRP for the 3070 is pretty much right in line with that, mm -hmm. honestly. Yeah. Over the Founders Edition card. So in, in all reality, without the tariffs, without everything that's happening, um, this card, the 30s, the, the Ventus, we're comparing the Ventus right now, like looking at the MSI Ventus, that's the 3070 that they have over there. Um, that would probably be around $850, $900, I'd imagine. In, in normal times, mm -hmm. because Founders Edition cards are always the cheapest uh, yeah. for the most part. Um, and then the AIB cards usually clock higher. Uh, they have better cooling. Like you get a few, it's not really like for nothing. Like you're actually getting things for it. Yes. For, it's um, not worth the money usually, but you are getting something for it. Yes. Yes. And it's it well, it's never worth the money on except now never worth the money on the lower end cards like lower end 3060 normal times doesn't make sense to get like a three fan card that card mm -hmm. will never get hot ever it'll be fine in fact yeah. the the gigabyte um vision the gigabyte vision card 3060 mm -hmm. i was looking at it because i had won it for a friend the other day and that card clocks let me get my my facts right vision 3060 i think it it clocks lower i know it clocks lower than the evga card that's a two fan card yeah so let's see oh come on just give me specs so this card clocks to 837 megahertz um and then the reference card is 870 8, 1777 now whether or not this actually hits that is arbitrary because these we know nowadays that these core clocks don't make like any sense at all. Yeah. Um, EVGA thirty sixty, and then the thirty sixty for EVGA. Oh, why would you? Eighteen eighty two megahertz. Oh, there is a thirty sixty for three hundred twenty nine dollars. The XC Black Gaming. Mm hmm. Yeah, th yeah, there's like one or two that are actually at MSRP. that price. MSRP. Yeah. Hey, good on good on uh, manufacturers for getting at two MSRP pricing, though. That's got to be tough, mm -hmm. <laughs> especially with no Founders Edition card. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the it's the X. I don't know why the XC Black Gaming is $70 less. It looks like it clocks a bit lower. 1777 megahertz instead of 1882. But like, you're getting 100 more megahertz, I guess, for... Seventy dollars, um, kind of not worth it for a thirty sixty to be honest. Like with the lower end cards, pretty much you want to go to the if you want to save a buck, you want to go to the lowest end card. But on the higher end cards, you want to be a little bit more mid range. Like for like if you want the pretty, then like the Asus Strix cards are usually the way to go. Yeah. Um, but the Asus tough cards do wonderfully, and they hardly have any RGB, usually meaning they cost less, and they mm -hmm. typically, typically clock around the same. Yeah. Um, it's just you get a lot more for the lights kind of thing. But anyways, regardless, the 6600 XT. Um, so basically what it is uh, marketed as is a 1080p card. That's what it's marketed as. It does some 1440p stuff, but it mostly is a 1080p card that's um, positioned against the 3060. And in all reality, I mean, okay, let's look at prices again. So 3060, let's say like EVGA, EVGA 3060, um, that, that, uh, 3060 XC gaming, that's supposed to be $400. I see on eBay for $730. Okay. So that's on the low end. Let's use low end pricing here for the 3060 and then the 6600 XT on eBay here goes for 630 so that's, that's cheaper hundred dollar discount i mean in the used market it does make sense mm -hmm. to get a card like this it doesn't do great you're paying 620 dollars. you're basically paying double what it's worth really yeah because i think that card is really only worth 250 now nah, it's more like triple but it's like the card's only really worth Two hundred fifty dollars, in my opinion. Um, and to back that up a little bit, so Hardware Unboxed did a video recently, where not a video, I think it was a tweet, 
they did a tweet recently where they were comparing um, the differences in performance between all the AMD cards mm. from the 6900 XT, 6800 XT, 6800. The 6800 is the only one that doesn't have XT in that family, I'm realizing. Um, they haven't released yep. any more cards. <laughs> um, but to get a more budget version, and I say budget version of the 6600 XT, because that thing is already, like, performance-wise, kind of your ground that you want to be at for a card if right. you, yeah if you don't want to go like back a few years like for a brand new card this is kind of your ground zero is this 6600 6600 xt or the 3060 yeah because anything lower than that you can just buy a used card from a yeah. previous generation and you can get the same performance get a 1050 ti with like four gigs of vram for 150 bucks like that that would be my recommendation on that because that will be better than integrated graphics yep and that's it <laughs> that's, that's what you're going for so uh 6600 xt so there were the hardware inbox was looking at the performance differences between all of those and to drop down one lower so they did the diff difference between 6800 6700 xt 6600 xt and then whatever a 6600 or 6500 xt i don't even know if they dropped that low but let's say 6600 the performance comparison, uh, the difference, I think it was going to be like, what, 35% slower, 30% slower than the 6600 XT mm -hmm. would be them re-releasing the RX 580. What, five years later? The 580? The 580. The RX 580, five years later, that's the same performance. And they would re-release it at what, $300 price? So more than what it's going on the used market for not that they <laughs> say they're going to do that but like that's where right. the performance is heading that just yeah. means the budget category is just non-existent anymore mm -hmm. budget category is last year's cards what's even budget anymore <laughs> <laughs> and gpu wise at least the budget category is buying pre-builds that's the budget yes. category right now yeah i mean unfortunately yeah if you're if you're not like savvy with computers if you want a computer like if you would like to build it yourself but you're like eh i don't know if i want to do this or if you're like i don't really want to scour ebay like 24 7 or like get on stock drops and then have to drop everything i'm doing to go buy this thing which i had to or, do like four times before i got a 3080 <laughs> or the shuffle every single day yeah it took me like two months to win again <laughs> that was that was a long time uh-huh <laughs> Um, but that's just gnawing at you. And sometimes I forgot to do the shuffle. Like everybody does. Like it just, it just happens from time to time. There is mm -hmm. just, or there's no good cards or they're bundled with like expensive motherboards or something that you don't want. And you don't want to have to like have the hassle of trying to resell resell. Yeah, that makes sense. But it's, it's like difficult. I think if someone wanted to build, <laughs> you're getting called out. Um, I think if someone wanted to build a new computer, then the new egg shuffle is a really good idea because you can mm -hmm. find a motherboard on there with a graphics card or a power supply with a graphics card, as long as it's not a gigabyte. Um, and you can get a section of your PC already done. Um, and then you're not trying to resell stuff because you got extra parts or whatever. But for someone that's already built something and now they want a GPU, it's not really the best option because there's rarely just a card on there. Yes, that's true. It, it only happens yeah. really from time to time I that it happens. Me. People have been even... <laughs> Your doggy coming after you? Yes. Yeah. Um what was i saying saying what were you just talking about the shuffle the shuffle oh yeah people were even like at, at the time this was happening i think this was earlier this year when prices were bonkers and uh, 3080 is still bonkers but there was a 30 there's some 3080 pre-builts going for like 14 1500 and people are like mine they would just get it immediately because that makes sense right you're paying for right. probably the exact same price you do on ebay if not a little bit less and, and you get a whole you, computer <laughs> and you get a whole computer 
Right. Like that's whether that's you need it or not. Yeah. Like take the card out, put it in your system, and then mm -hmm. uh, throw your old card in there and sell it. Yep. I saw a lot of pre-builds for sale on Craigslist with no graphics card. Yep, I did too. <laughs> <laughs> saw a lot of them no graphics card it said no gpu available uh -huh. it's like mm, i know exactly what you just did <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and it's got like uh um a ryzen 5000 series uh cpu <gasps> puppy cam hey it's hi, puppy, puppy cam hi puppy <laughs> oh, hello hello let him let him <laughs> oh cute oh cute all right yes you so happy <laughs> uh yeah let's uh end the depressing gpu talk uh yeah so in short 6600 xt it exists it's cheaper than a 3060 it's the same performance if you really need a card right now it's fine um but like if you can wait then wait if you don't have a computer buy a pre-built that's basically it <laughs> mm -hmm. that would be my my advice anyways Pretty much. All right. So uh, let's talk about cool stuff now. Let's talk about some really cool stuff. <laughs> Take it away, Taylor. All right. Um. So, uh, we're stealing from Gamers Nexus again. Um. With it's their... such a great resource. Shout out to Gamers <laughs> Nexus. Go watch. Yeah. Them. Yeah. Um, the Fractal Design Torrent case. Um, is their is it the best case they've reviewed highest airflow case is that what it was so in in specifically the cpu torture test based on their current setup and i think that the they have like 25 to 30 cases on that um graph it performed the best like the best out of all of the cases they have tested in their current format it might not be all their cases because what happens is like you'll get different CPUs in there, you'll get different right. GPUs in there as hardware evolves, and their current testing methodology, it's at the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is crazy. Um, it costs $189 um, for a, a tempered glass side panel, um, bolt-free latching, um, supports extra thick radiators up to 420 millimeter. Wait, that's, that's, that's not... Big thick though that's just long no but they support extra thick radiators oh where does are you on there like their website uh new egg you're on new egg yeah um support extra thick what does extra so, thick mean give me so, a size <laughs> thick <laughs> apparently like thick. 45 millimeters like what's extra thick thick <laughs> i need specs big Let's see uh um, basically what it means is it's not your standard, uh, full tower ATX case where you've got the basement. And so then the front section is really only, you know, you don't have that much space on the front for a thick radiator and fans because then you've got the basement plate coming up to it. Um, this is open in the front, full, full open. So you can put mm. as thick of a radiator in there as you want, um, because the power supply and all that is tucked up in the attic. I'm going to call it because it's the not attic. the basement. Okay. Yeah. It's the attic. So there's, there's actually like an angled shroud that comes down like that. And then the power supply is up here. So it directs the airflow down and kind of, um, allows it to go through the front, whether you have radiator there or not and that's really across cool. your components and then straight out the back that's entirely mesh um will i break everything if i try and share my screen here uh it's that's a that's a yes <laughs> i will if i <laughs> i believe so well if i cancel out of it will everything go back to normal yes okay let me try and share my screen just so i can give you guys like an idea of what's happening here go for it you didn't like my my hand modeling of the <laughs> No, I I think the website does better. <laughs> okay. I mean T-show zone. Let's see. Oh, it doesn't even look like it's coming through. I think you would have to like click on it on your end probably. Oh, do I have to accept? 
You no? might need to. Oh. What's it look like now? Okay. Hey. Yo, no, hey. we're good. Oh, we're wow. good. That is perfect. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Welcome to the screen share cam. All right. So, so there you can see the attic. That's the the top left. Yes. Of the case with yes. the little. With, with the little what now? The. I can't whistle when I'm smiling. <laughs> can't whistle under pressure. Nope. That part. So... Anyways, yes. So. Um, this is kind of like the airflow path that it's taking, which is really, really cool. Um, obviously, it's meant for, well, not meant, it doesn't have to be meant for it, but it is kind of meant for a full airflow kind of case from what I'm seeing here. Very tiny graphics card they put in there to model this, but yeah. nonetheless, <laughs> yeah. um, looks like you're getting fresh air no matter what, basically, mm -hmm. uh, coming into the case. The so, cool thing, yeah, go for it. Yeah, to be fair... Um, it would do very good with a big radiator in the front too, whether that's an AIO or a custom loop, because you've got still fresh air coming up from the bottom for your graphics card. If that's still on air, say you just got an AIO, then yeah. you're going to be getting a lot of fresh air from the front uh, through to cool your CPU. And then most of that, I would bet, is just going to go right above the graphics card and out. And then the graphics card is going to get that cool air from the bottom, push straight up into it um, yeah. from the three 140 mil fans that it comes with. So that's cool. And doesn't it come with... So it comes with three 140 and then two 180, right? Yep. That's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy how much fan. So it's two hundred and forty dollars. You get two one eighty mil fans, three one forty mil fans on the bottom. Temper glass side paddle. Is that what it is? Uh yes. You can either get a uh metal side panel, or I think it might come with both. Um, okay. I'm not hundred percent. I'm looking up the specs for the NHD fifteen of how tall that thing is. Oh for my god. No, the height. I'm pretty sure every single... Okay, hold on. I, I'm not going to say that just yet. The I want to see their full... Um... So, you know, uh, their fully passive cooler. Uh, Noctua's. Uh, I don't think I do. You don't? I know they had a fully passive. Yep, fully passive. One second. Let me get it up here. Be this tall. Uh, so the NHD 15 is a little bit um, shorter. So it's like 180 millimeters. I had it up, and now I'm looking for the other thing. <laughs> NHP1. This thing is cool, honestly. But it's it fully, pa fully passive. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's fanless. Uh, fully passive. How? Wow. So the NHD 15 is actually taller than this. So hmm. if I go back to that specifications. So height without fan or height with fan, let's say 165 millimeters. The max height CPU cooler height in the fractal design case here is 188 millimeters. You have room for activities. Yep. So like much room for activities. So much room for activities. And like 165, you, you have, what, 23 millimeters to play with? Mm -hmm. That's almost like two and a half centimeters. Like, that's a crazy amount of gap that you have, which means that glass on the side's not really going to get hot. Not that it would, because you have so much airflow coming through it. Right. But it's just really this case it, now to be fair the case is gigantic <laughs> yes it is a full atx <laughs> yes no question about that mm -hmm. um but it has a lot of features and a lot it, of airflow it actually looks from what i'm looking at it is full atx but it does look a little bit more compact height wise than most yeah like 
I see the board, and then I know the power supply is on top. So maybe it's because things are shifted down. I think that might be why it's like tricking me into that. It's because the power supply is on the top instead of being at the bottom. Yeah. And it does have decent feet on the bottom. Like yeah, they're sticking nice off probably there. a good inch, inch and a half. So you're going to get plenty of airflow up from the bottom as well. Gotcha. Yeah, that totally makes sense. But yeah, really cool t case. It did very well. Looks like it has room for two full uh, hard drives and then four SSDs. Mm -hmm. I don't know why you would need that, uh, really. Uh, but it's there. If, if you you're a baller. It. If you're a baller, you need it. Um, yep. Oh, it looks like the brackets are included as well. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff that's included with this, which is cool. Also, it just looks cool. I mean, yeah. Like, look at it, y'all. It looks awesome. Once, once Taylor accepts the stream, then y'all are going to see what it looks like. It looks nice. Y'all. Y'all. Look at this. It's nice. wonder if this will take up too much of the screen. Nice. Yeah. But yeah, it looks very nice. Um, it... Yeah, it's got a really cool design, very open air. It looks like there's actually some mesh there, so it'll help with any kind of dust. But mm -hmm. that's like the closest you can get to open air with just a filter, but still having it look nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So very, very cool there. Um, Cool. Yeah, so not a ton of news. There's like there was like a few things going on, but nothing like super crazy this month as far as tech goes. Oh, my camera unfocus itself come on you can do it there you go <laughs> yay sometimes you gotta manually focus your camera um yeah so we wanted to create a little bit of a segment here um when we have run out of things to talk about but also just things we want to talk about with you um is what games we're playing right now um so feel free to put in the chat if you're out there like what games you're playing right now um but taylor what games are you playing? What games am I playing? Yes. Um, from time to time, I've been playing Pokemon Unite. Okay. Um, that's very fun. Yes, very fun. I'm not great at it, but how are I you think... liking the um, MOBA scene? It's my first foray into. Is that the right word? Sure, I'll accept it. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> I'm dipping my toes for the first time into the MOBA scene. Um ah. so it's it's cool. It's different. I've never yeah. played a game like that before. I I like the I like the briefness of it. Um especially yes. because these are short compared to other MOBAs. Mm -hmm. Um and the fact that <clears throat> you're not up against people that necessarily have like you know off the bat like years of time and money into a character or something where like uh -huh. if you're playing a different kind of online game then you might come against an opponent that's just like way out of your league like sure. you have no chance you're because sure. you just started whereas yeah. this like everyone starts off on a relatively flat playing field mm -hmm. you can get items but a lot of it comes down to teamwork and yeah for sure. If your teammates are doing what they're supposed to or not. Um, and if you're doing what you're supposed to or not. So I think that's cool. I think it, it feels fresh compared to other online games that can feel like you're behind for months. Yes. And something like, so I played Dota 2 for years, played League uh, before that. And coming from like the MOBA scene, it's very basic. There are things that like I like about Dota better. Um, I, there's nothing I like about League better, honestly. <laughs> um, but uh, Pokemon Unite is nice because it's only ten minute games. It can't. There is even a five minute game option. Um, but only ten minute games. There. I think my main thing that I like about it the most is the fact that if you're losing, you can still win in the end. If you right. have gotten enough last hits if you have leveled up enough um because it's score based instead of just like taking down towers 
I really like the fact that if you are able to successfully get Zapdos and then dunk on your enemy, you win. And if you've been doing playing garbage the entire game and then you go do that, then you can win. The other mm -hmm. side of it is true, too. You have to be on your guard the entire time as the enemy team being like, we can't have them score because they can win. So it's like that. I, I don't like the fact that they don't give you a score throughout the game. But I do kind of yeah. like it because it does make you want to be like, we're really struggling. But then it gets to the point. It was like, well, this is really close match. It's like, oh, wow, I still got to like work hard at this. But it does suck when it's like, you know, you're going to I mean, when you know you're going to lose, you can just surrender. Like, it's just that right. Like, it's fine. Yeah. But it's it's cool. Coming from Dota of like Dota doesn't even have surrendering at all. So, like, you just have to lose over and over and over again. If the enemy team just wants <laughs> to keep killing you, they can do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but with that, they, like, you have to, you're locked into a 40-minute game. Mm -hmm. And if you're losing, you're losing. There's nothing, like, sometimes there's nothing you can do about it because whatever top lane fed this person, now this person's coming down to you and, like, basically wrecking havoc on everything. I think they made it more accessible to... Um people who are playing pokemon games it's true and that's very true i'm very i hope this doesn't ruin the game but i'm very curious what's going to happen when mobile comes into the uh, fray because mobile yes. comes out next month mm -hmm. um, and mobile means desktop because android emulators I, we'll see we'll see how that works uh button presses doesn't sound super fun to try and figure out um but that would be very interesting mm -hmm. i would be interested to try it out maybe we'll do a, well, maybe we'll do a video on it how to play pokemon unite with uh on the computer yeah. hopefully oh, it just wow. runs in windows 11 that would be nice that'd be that awesome happened. yeah that would be like the biggest incentive to upgrade to windows 11 <laughs> yeah right um uh, i'm playing grounded skyward sword i'm also playing skyward sword um, i'm also I playing have... grounded in fact i think we all are dylan are we playing grounded? i, I think so i think we're all playing grounded. I, I think two wednesdays a month we're here on twitch playing grounded oh yeah two wednesdays a month wow two, at least two of them sometimes oh, more if we're lazy and we don't want to do this through um <laughs> i don't think we're playing grounded next wednesday but <laughs> we are playing video games mm -hmm. this month, so be sure to um leave us a follow um if you want to see some more gaming content uh we do this is more of an end piece but i'm talking about it right now we do one of these once a month and then caitlin does oh. keyboard things oh no uh, once a month uh taylor is now um colors i am uh, dead he has, he has been uh banished to the rainbow realm <laughs> um he will be back shortly after he comes back from his timeout uh so it's just me here you get you get little old dylan just rambling about things while taylor endures his uh punishment uh, i must and... change my batteries oh oh <laughs> he has to change his his batteries to pilot his little remote ship back over here um thoughts on this diamond is... and pearl remakes seems pretty polarizing yeah. for a lot of people i don't know why it's polarizing to be honest with you i like the fact that it is like a true remake in and of itself uh that's what a lot of people have been asking for because here's the thing the pokemon community will never be happy the moment you change things about it man i wish they would make it faithful they do you don't change anything about it man i wish they would have done this this this, and this nobody can be happy anymore like it's really it, it's really annoying like it's the same thing with the keyboard community a little bit of like things being in stock of i know hippio was talking about this uh on stream like people were irritated I that drop had respond can you just go get it <laughs> Uh, Hippio had a uh, rant about uh, people like basically not being able to be happy. So their drop had a keyboard set that was in stock and ready to buy. And some people didn't like it. And they're like, they should have done an interest check to see if people liked it. And yeah. he's like, interest check? Like, this is in stock right now. Would you rather have an interest check and then wait a year to get something or buy something that's in stock right now? He's like, you guys can't be pleased. And it's the same thing with the... It's, it's the same thing with most big franchises for the most part 
Hey, he is back from the Rainbow Realm. How I found your... my batteries. How is your punishment? It was colorful. Colorful. Ah, yes. <laughs> that makes sense. Yes. Uh, yeah, I need to get different ones of these that plug into the wall. Oh, hey, I have that right now. Yeah. I'm going to steal it. I mean, Shh. you're welcome to to drive far to get over here. <laughs> it would cost me more in gas to go yes. steal yours than it would to just yes. buy my own. Yes, that's true. <sighs> um, in this economy? Yeah. No, but I, I do really like the Diamond and Pearl remakes. Um, I yeah. am definitely going to be getting both of them because Katie's never played through it, and so we'll get to play through it together kind of thing, which will be nice. Um, the chibi is fine. They did it in uh, Gen 6, and it looked really bad, but that's because it was on 3DS, and it, the graphics were just bad in the overworld, like 100%. But right. it's actually good now, and I kind of like the way that it looks. I think Cynthia looks hilarious. I think Cyrus also looks hilarious, being menacing and then just being this little tiny Switch thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny to me. Um, but, I mean, that's what, like, all the other games were, too. You just didn't have it like zoomed in and 3d'd on right like it looks yeah. like they took the older games and they just made them yeah. completely overhauled but the same perspective like same camera like yeah. everything like that like i i think that's cool i yeah. i like it because honestly i that's that's my favorite kind of pokemon game yeah so i'm not gonna complain when there's my favorite pokemon game remade to be better i'm gonna complain that they're 60 dollars still maybe <laughs> um yeah. i really wish that they would have released a uh, a two-pack like a diamond and pearl for oh, 60 they did. oh wait diamond and pearl for 60 i wish they would have done that i understand that it's the pokemon thing to take their old games and remaster them and then sell them again for the same price yes Yes. Um, all, but... all the, here, here's the thing that you need to understand. All Nintendo games, regardless of age, are sixty dollars. Yes. Yeah. Like, literally, I. I've I've seen old... the donkey video about it. There's a donkey <laughs> video about it, but like, literally, I I confirmed that because I found uh, we were cleaning up my parents' house and I found uh, a copy of Melee that I had, um, and I looked it up. Sixty dollars for a GameCube game that came out a while ago. And that's not to say, oh, I expected it to be, like, uh, what direction am I going in? Like, higher. I didn't expect it to be, like, worth a ton. I kind of expected it to be a little bit lower, like, as it, as it goes. But no, well, $60. GameCube is kind of becoming a, I mean, it's always oh, been oh, no, a sorry. cult it, classic. It is, it is the other way around. I expected it to be higher because of how old it right. was and that kind of thing. Um, but it was just $60, and I was like, that's a little weird. And then mm -hmm. I went to check, like, you know, like, Ocarina of Time, like, for the N64. Mm. The silver one is $60. It's wild. Huh. It's crazy. Yeah, because some be fair, games, like, like Mario Sunshine is, like, $120 for a GameCube. Is it? Yes. Last time um, I looked, anyways. Because that's, that's, like, one of the top GameCube games that um as far as price goes like it's one like of them it's like 80 dollars hmm. maybe at some point it was maybe i remember i remember wanting to buy it and i was like hmm i'm not gonna pay double to play it in 480 i see i see a few for 40 dollars too like between 40 and 70 bucks it looks like that's what i'm saying though is it's like always like right there in the middle unless it's a special edition thing it's always like right at 60 dollars mm -hmm. um I can't remember what uh, the point I was trying to make with that, but it's, uh, yeah. I mean, it's $60. What I find hilarious is that they do sell a double pack of diamond and pearl and it's $120, which is hilarious to me. Like just make it $10 less. People right. will buy the crap out of it. If you price, you it would be making less. more money. Yes, if you, you did would. this, yes, you're not losing money. Like uh, it's, to be that's, fair, that's a really, really funny thing about, nintendo and oh, pokemon yeah. specifically oh, is yeah. how much money they lose yes <laughs> yes for exactly. doing so much of their their business um uh dealings yeah uh, I, I, there's a word that i'm i'm thinking of but i can't remember it no like uh their 
the way that they do business, their style is very much like get as much money from all these their IPs M- as you can. Their MO or whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. For for that being their MO, they're very bad at it. <laughs> yes, that's true. Like, they just they they don't take the easy shots a yeah. lot of times. Like, yeah, even if you made it five dollars less, people would want it because it comes in one case. Right. Yeah, that's true. Or they can keep it like as a collector's edition kind of thing. Right. Because like, oh yeah, I bought both of them kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I um I mean Diamond and then Platinum, uh, were my favorite Pokemon games of all time. Platinum specifically was my my favorite Pokemon game, and I think still is. It's been a long time since I played it, but I remember I played through that game two or three times. Yeah, which that's a... is unusual for me for Pokemon games. Okay. Normally, I just spend a lot of time playing through it mm-hmm. once, but this was like, I want to do that again in a couple of years. Like, yeah, it, it's... it's good. I, I played through it recently. I think within the last two years, I had played it once because I kind of skipped over that generation of the DS game. So I didn't mm-hmm. play a Diamond, Pearl, Platinum, or Black and White, or Black and White 2. And I had gotten a 3DS, and then I played X, and then Y, and then, the, like, up from there kind of thing so i kind of skipped those two generations i have to say what probably my favorite games are black and white um yeah i didn't play black and white too but black and white the story uh, like i'm a sucker for a good story this is why i'm really really been liking skyward sword is like the story keeps me invested it keeps me going at the game i need to get to the next story point kind of thing i still have not played black or white okay so uh (laughs) The characters in it are very, for a Pokemon game. Now let, let's let's be real. Like Pokemon is in its own class. It's created its own class. There are other RPGs that are better story. Right. Totally get that. But for a Pokemon game, Black and White had some really serious themes running through it, and N is a fantastic character in the in the series that I really really liked. So it's got some really cool elements. It was the last. Well, Black and White Two was the last 2D pokemon game okay so it has like the best pixel art stuff that you can get in that right game, before it turned into the weird 3d like halfway between 2d and 3d kind of games what do you with, mean halfway? with with sun and moon where it wasn't it wasn't just the 2d art style of pokemon that's when they 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 changed the art style to be more like you know so that a, happened in a X 3D and y. world. That happened in X and Y. That was X and Y. Okay. It's X and Y. X and Y was the first 3D one that made a lot of Pokemon look really bland. Like poor Typhlosion. Poor guy looks like a weird little mammal thing that doesn't really? have fire coming out of him. <laughs> yeah. Have you not seen what the 3D sprite for Typhlosion looks like? Uh uh-uh. uh. Hold on. It's the same one like in Pokemon Go. Uh. I don't know how I'm going to center this. Uh, <laughs> uh, here, let me share my screen again. Okay. Uh, back. Hopefully it shows up here. Oh. <laughs> look at Look at this boyo. <laughs> Uh huh. He, he's got no flames. He's a weird he just, mammal. He just looks like a weird naked bear. But then, like, look here. Like, yeah. His he's got like he a collar. Fire there, which is why I'm even in. Look at what he's like in uh, Pokemon Stadium. They mm-hmm. even have the fire there. But they decided no, they were just not going to give him any fire. <laughs> which is why I'm very excited for Legend Arceus because the moment that they panned to Syndical, he had the fire behind him. And I thought that was the coolest thing. I'm like, yes. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Speaking of Legend of Arceus, that game looks amazing too. Yeah, I am down for that. Um, <laughs> Weird naked bear band name called it. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, Legends Arceus looks incredible. Do you have a starter that you want to pick in that game? Yeah, have you chosen yet? I have not chosen yet. So, I don't know if I can pick until I know for a fact that they're not doing regional variants of the end evolutions for those Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I love I love Cyndaquil. Um, I, 
same. I love all of them. I feel I feel like all of those options are amazing. Yeah. So I I've never. I mean I've I've never played Oshawa. Right, and Gen I've, five. Right, and I've never played um. Uh, Rowlet. Rowlet. So. I thought you did Sun and Moon. I started it, but I didn't get very far. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> it's me. Yes, because you. Yeah. Um, Rowlet is one of my favorite starters, like of all time. But it, that's why it's such a hard choice for me. Is I love Oshawott because Duwat is probably my favorite middle starter. Really? Yes. Have you seen what he looks like? Yes, I have. Let me look. Duwat. I'll I'll get the it up here in the stream. Duwat's character design is so cool. I love the dual like shells that oh yeah to, like cut on and everything like that that's cool like this right here looks so so cool mm -hmm. and oshawott's adorable the only thing i don't like about this evolutionary line is samurai i understand because yeah, it's weird i understand that people don't like like bipedal pokemon and i get that like incineroar took uh, it's he's an acquired taste uh, basically, and I get that, but the fact that he went from bipedal to quadruped doesn't really make a ton of sense to me, mm -hmm. personally. Like, yeah, if like Litten and it went doesn't from quadruped to bipedal, which makes more sense. I don't like it still, but it makes more sense. The like samurai doesn't it doesn't look like a samurai in any way. No, it's got like padding it's like on its seal. legs and that's it it's got a yeah. massive horn samurais don't have horns it just looks honestly the the character of it just looks really bland there's another one here that i'll just share really quick um that looks really good uh like a little bit more texture a little bit more seal like kind of thing i understand it's pokemon you're not supposed yeah. to get like crazy but like something like this right has a bit more character to it i like I know he has a beard, but I didn't even notice the beard until I saw this picture of him that's not even Samurai. It's uh -huh. just an artist's rendition of it. Like, right. I didn't even notice it. I understand he's trying to be a samurai. You know those little spikes on his arms? He actually takes out and swings as a sword. Okay. I think part of it is, like, his back feet are kind of weird. Yep. Might be part of it. And if it was just him and a tail and then his front, I would be down. Right. It'd be really cool if he was able to like stand on his tail that kind of thing like if you're going for the seal aspect sure i get it but like four legs <laughs> for a seal <laughs> just kind of funny for me anyways rant yeah. over on that but i love duot <laughs> so if i was to do legends arceus depend and that's why it's dependent on what the final evolution is going to be because if they like change samurai to something else i am in 100 mm -hmm. um though the same can be true for typhlosion and uh decidui because those also can look really really cool <laughs> yeah yeah i i feel like initially i'm leaning towards uh i'm leaning towards cynical but mm. i almost don't want to because i that's my go-to sure. that makes sense like not only being the fire type because fire types usually my go-to but i wouldn't like you yeah right yeah <laughs> it's it's interesting because most generations i have a favorite and i've only played that pokemon when playing through them like i only played um obviously well actually no that's not true that's not true i take that back i rescind that statement um the you ones that i it? have played i i've played all three different types okay so like uh fire red leaf green i yeah. played charmander bulbasaur and squirtle usually yeah. it was bulbasaur or charmander um in the the cyndaquil generation which was uh cyndaquil and picarita and totodile right yeah um i love totodile totodile is like my I think Totodile is my favorite out of that generation, um, but Cyndaquil was second. 
Hmm. Um, I think typically it's it's fire and grass for me, but I think Totodile is the exception. Okay. Um, because he's just awesome, and I think that comes from watching the the anime. anime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Totodile, Ash's Totodile kind of thing. Yeah. Well, and for alligator is pretty cool too. Like, it's not it's not a bad evolution line. Crawdon by any means. is not. He's, he's he egg. falls in he falls uh um into the teenager pokemon realm but bayleaf <laughs> is so awesome yeah <laughs> and to be fair quilava is not bad quilava just looks like a small typhlosion uh yeah it's cool has a bit more character than than uh quilava that's true yeah but yeah it's it'll be interesting uh, yeah. i i'm I'm, I'm curious to see how they change or if they change the starters at all um, because they are from a different region. Right. Because well, in the no, trailer, not, actually. In the trailer said they were Pokemon that he he found in different regions while traveling and brought yeah. them there. Right, but they're all from different regions. What do you mean? So, so like they're from their respective region yes no i mean different as in they're not from the H hisuian His region hisuian? yeah i don't even know how to say it yet um so i'm curious if they will evolve or change because they're in a different environment because they're they're uh, having to live in the cold environment yes, yes. that's probably very true i mean growl i mean growlith looks different from the get-go but growlith like, Stant stantler evolves into that right to uh weird weird ear mm -hmm. um and basculin has a very metal evolution and to basque legion <laughs> basque philo philosopher stone yeah basically basically <laughs> that yeah <laughs> yeah um was there another one that oh braviary uh, yeah braviary but that's not an evolution yeah it is is it it is mm -hmm. yeah oh, okay rufflet rufflet evolves into braviary so yep. yeah we'll see so we'll see yeah well who knows if those the starters look different for those evolutions look different too or if it's like uh just the base level and then they evolve into that from being that region that that mm -hmm. does have some uh um credit to it so yeah yeah it'll be weird to be able to catch the starters of the region you're in just like in the wild can you I mean, in the trailer, they showed them wandering around. What starters? The did they show Oshawott? I don't think they did because the the professor specifically brought the starters from different regions. No, no, I mean the starters that are native to the Hisuian region or um, whatever that is. Uh, I don't think there are starters. I think that's the point because you are the no person with the. I mean the Sinnoh starters. Oh, Sinnoh starters. Got right. it. Yes. The yes, starters yes, yes. for the yes. region that you are for... in. So, okay, to be fair, it's not Sinnoh. It is Hisuian. Hisuian. Right. So it is technically a different region, but it's the same area. So I get it's that. You're old able to find Sinnoh. the, the <laughs> Sinnoh starters in right. the Hisuian region. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's going to be weird. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe is. we'll find out why they got so rare thought of that because like they're they're supposedly rare in like the not in the anime but in the games they're supposedly mm -hmm. rare that's why you can't catch them outside of getting them as a starter right so yeah yeah i'm excited for the game that's gonna be fun mm -hmm. all right yeah. well we're about ready to to end it here i think so yeah we're coming up on the hour and a half mark i think that's mm -hmm. probably a good place to to call it um i like how uh both both streams we've just uh devolved into talking about uh video games yeah. for the majority yeah. of the time <laughs> I think we talk for video about video games for a good half hour there uh-huh <laughs> that's what happens yeah it is you know, it is what it is I'm not complaining yeah anyways uh for all who are watching uh thank you so much for watching um we uh, kind of go over the schedule a little bit here again, too. Uh, we do one of these about once a month. Um, 
I don't not sure if next time we'll do it at the end of the month, but the kind of idea is to get a whole month's worth of news, uh, tech news, uh, maybe video game news, depending on what what is available. We'll kind of talk about it based on what we want to talk about. Uh, we have uh, two streams uh, every other week where we do something gaming related. We've been playing Grounded recently, um, but I think we have a fun um, little chaotic game that's coming up here uh, next week. Uh, and then Caitlin does some keyboard stuff sometimes. Uh, I don't know what she's doing the next time, but she's going to do some keyboard stuff. I think she um, might be lubing switches. Okay. So if you want to come hang out with Caitlin, chat and stuff, come on down and uh, yeah, we'll talk and hang out kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, be sure to leave a follow if you liked uh, this stream. We do also um, make videos on YouTube if you're strictly from Twitch. Uh, we have a few videos up right now. Uh, try to upload weekly uh, every Friday. So if you have if you're a PC enthusiast, uh, we have some cool keyboard videos coming up here pretty soon. Um, just general tech stuff we like to talk about. So um, if you want to uh, like and subscribe to our videos, if you like tech content, uh, if you don't really care about YouTube, you like Twitch, come over here, follow us here on Twitch, I'm trying to hit that affiliate status. So uh, yeah. yeah, anything else you want to say, Taylor? Uh, I think you, you hit the all the nail heads with that. Um, yeah, we... we... Sweet. <laughs> We appreciate all the the viewers, and again, like he said, if if you're not followed yet, um, we really appreciate it. It does a lot for us, and it's free to it's, do for you. It's free to follow and subscribe. Mm -hmm. Well, not on um, here. It's free to subscribe on YouTube. <laughs> right. Well, you can't subscribe to us yet on here. <laughs> not free. <laughs> but, but if it's not free, do it eventually. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. We will see you on the next one. Bye. Bye.